This is Bulldog Country, presented by Minnesota Power and Essentia Health. What is up? Welcome to Bulldog Country. It's our weekly half hour installment of news, highlights, and analysis of UMD Bulldogs Athletics. It's our chance to give the fans a bit better idea of what actually goes on with these teams and these athletes that you see competing for UMD. Coming up in tonight's show, we are going to talk hockey. The Minnesota Wild were in town earlier this week. They brought with them a couple of former Bulldogs, one player, one coach. We'll also go around the pros, tell you which former UMD guys will start the season on NHL rosters. There's seven of them, so see if you can name all of them before we get there in the show. Plus, we're going to chat with volleyball coach Jim Booz. He's now the winningest coach in that program's UMD history. But first, we are talking football, and joining us this week is UMD defensive coordinator John Stagger. Coach, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Hey, Zach, it's great to be here. You uh, bounced back yeah, last week with a, a big win on the road against Wayne State. You go down there. Uh, I think you got to be happy with the play. I know uh, maybe late in the game you gave up a few more touchdowns uh, than, than a defensive guy would want, <laughs> but uh, a good win for the Bulldogs. Yeah, it was really good win. Coming off a tough loss, you know, and, and we had to take a nine-hour bus ride and, and play a team that, you know, the, the last time we went down there uh, beat us. So I think the guys came down and, and, and really were focused, came out, played well. You know, we created some turnovers early and, and uh, really kind of jumped on them right away. And, uh, but real pleased with the way the guys played. Your unit uh, has seemed to step up early in the season through the first four games. You got nine takeaways as a unit. Uh, I know that uh, you always want to get takeaways, but nine through four games seems like an awful lot. Yeah, we've, we've really worked on it. I, we focus with it uh, with our guys, and they've done a good job, I think. Um, putting pressure on the quarterback. We've stripped some balls. Um, we've gotten fumbles and interceptions. So, you know, you like both of those, and, and we're going to continue to emphasize that. And it really has a huge impact on games. So if we can keep doing that, you know, it'll help us down the road to, to win football games. Always important to get your offense the ball, but uh, with a young quarterback with maybe some question marks on offense going in, I think that a lot of them have been answered at this point. But uh, is it important to give your offense more chances on the football field? Yeah, no question. You know, anytime, especially you can get the ball closer to the goal line, your percentages go up with scoring. And we've been able to do that. Um, it, you know, and we've been able to do it early in games, which is a big deal because it, we can play with a lead. And it's so much easier I think from an offensive standpoint and also defensively playing with the lead, um, you know, we can get after the quarterback a little bit more, expect them to probably throw the football. So, you know, like I said, if we can keep doing that, uh, good things will continue to happen. Heck, your guys have scored three touchdowns themselves on these takeaways. That's got to be a fun feeling. Yeah, no question. It's, it's, uh, it's good when we can score on defense. And that was a, you know, last week we got an interception by Colby Ring early, which was a heck of a play. And um, he got it in the end zone. And, and uh, you know, that, that at the time, um, you know, put us up uh, a couple scores, and, and uh, like I said, that makes it easier to play on defense. It feels like this defense isn't at its best when you're not talking about it. You want these guys flying to the ball, creating big plays, uh, momentum plays for this team. It feels like this team is at its best when you can't look away when they're on the field. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we're a pressure style unit, and um, you know, we like to get after the quarterback, and, and to do that, though, you've got to defend the run game on early downs. And I think that's been the key, you know, uh, kind of a hidden key for us. We have not given up many yards rushing. As a matter of fact, last week I think their longest run was 12 yards. Um, even in the Mankato game, um, you know, we didn't give up a whole lot to a really good rushing football team. Early in the year, you know, going all the way back to the Sioux Falls game, I think we gave up like seven yards rushing for the game. So that allows us to get after the quarterback when they're going to throw the football. And, and making teams one-dimensional is really a big thing. Your guys have always been really focused uh, getting out on the football field on Saturdays, but is it tough to get a little bit complacent, uh, not to get a little bit complacent when the offense goes out there, scores 60-plus points? I mean, you're going to win a lot of those football games. Yeah, you know, it's funny. F football's an interesting sport because the offense and defense are split. You know, the units are split. And, and, and you know, we, we really... We really try to focus on playing our game and, and being as competitive every series as we can. And the one thing is, the last couple of weeks, you know, when, when we get ahead like that, you know, some of our backups get in. Those guys want to perform well, too, and they want to play at a high level. And that's one of the things we pride ourselves on the defensive side of the ball. We play a lot of guys. You know, if you get on the bus, you're probably going to get on the field. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's been one of our strengths, I think, this year is just our overall depth. Do you have confidence obviously in the home games that we've watched uh, I mean even in the close games now you've been rotating in the secondary rotating your defensive line it seems like you've got maybe 20 25 guys that you could put out there on the yeah, field I, I think especially in our front seven um, it's as deep and I've been here you know a number of years it's as deep as we've ever been we're playing you know probably eight defensive linemen um, we're playing at least eight linebackers 
Um, and, and there's a reason for that. You know, if, if you get a guy hurt or something like that down the road, well, I've had some guys that have some experience. Um, it also keeps guys fresh during the year. You know, you tend to get guys beat up a little bit. And, and uh, that's the one thing that we've, you know, knock on wood, we've been able to keep our guys healthy on the defensive side. In the secondary, we're a little bit thinner. We've rotated our safeties. We've got a three-corner rotation. Um, we really, those guys are like three starters. They just rotate every series. Um, you know, Kenny Darian and, and Chris Blake have done a great job. So, yeah, really happy with our depth. You would talk about Kenny Chow in the corner rotation. I want to take a look here at a shot uh, from the season opener. It's an interception by Kenny Chow, the cornerback. He jumps this route on a simple little button hook by Sioux Falls. Is that part of the scheme where he's allowed to make a break on that play? Yeah, no question. That, that was one where we were bringing a blitz on a third down. So, you know, it felt like the quarterback is going to get rid of the ball in a hurry. You, that's a route. Hey, take a chance there. And, and the thing we preach to our corners is, hey, you got to know when to gamble. You know, you guys can make big plays. That's a situation on a third and three where we're going to bring, you know, a zero blitz. Hey, the quarterback's got to get the ball out of his hands or he's going to get sacked because we're rushing one more than they can block. So Kenny, and Kenny's a veteran guy. He, he's kind of a, he's got a lot of moxie and, and uh, you know, he knows when to set guys up and, and did a great job on that play. If the quarterback hadn't thrown it so low, he would have been in the end zone <laughs> yeah. for another defensive no, touchdown. No question. Well, we're going to take a break. We're going to bring you back to the end of the show, talk about uh, homecoming weekend with St. Cloud State, though. So John Steger, we'll have more with him later. It's Bulldog Country on the My Nine Sports Network. Welcome back. Justin Fontaine learned last weekend that he had made the opening night roster of the Minnesota Wild. On Monday, the former Bulldog got a chance to return to his collegiate home ice. The Wild were in town Monday and Tuesday for practices at Amsoil Arena and a team bonding retreat ahead of Thursday night season opener. Fontaine played the past two seasons in the American Hockey League, but he and others with the Wild feel now is the time for him to step up and contribute at the NHL level. Well, since I left Duluth, probably just more two-way player. I mean, uh, my past year has been kind of playing in every different situation, so got a lot better defensively, and just uh, time and space gets taken away a lot quicker even uh, than the AHL. So you got to know what you're doing with the puck before you get it, and uh, just be aware and make quick plays. An opening night, we probably have him starting on a fourth line role. Uh, but you know, one thing that we like having him around is. And if we lose a skilled player, we know that he can move up. We know that he can play with uh, players and, and create offensively. You can tell he's got a lot of hockey sense. I think he's going to be a good player. Again, with, with the younger guys, you got to let him keep developing. But um, you can tell that, that he can think the game really well. And Looking at a little bit of what Fontaine has done in his hockey career, last season he was the scoring leader for Houston of that American League, finishing with 23 goals and 33 assists. In his four seasons with the Bulldogs, Fontaine totaled 164 points and helped UMB as a senior to the program's first ever national championship. But he wasn't the only former Bulldog on the ice this week with the Wild International Falls native and former UMB goaltender Bob Mason is entering his 11th season as goaltending coach for the team. He actually still holds the UMD record for saves in a single season. After UMD, he went on to play parts of eight seasons in the NHL. Sticking with hockey, another former Bulldog has made an NHL roster. Alex Stalock will be the number two goaltender for San Jose to start the year. He's played in three career NHL games, earning one win and posting a 1.68 goals against average in those contests. And no surprise, but it was made official this week. Former UMB defenseman Justin Falk is on the opening night roster for the Carolina Hurricanes. He played 38 games last season on the blue line, finishing with five goals and 10 assists. So you add those two to Fontaine, and then there's four more former Bulldogs to make NHL rosters for opening night. Jay Rosehill, Matt Niskanen, Mason Raymond, and Jason Garrison. Seven former UMD players in all will start the season in the NHL. In women's college hockey, UMD this week cracked the top 10 of the USA Today and USA Hockey Magazine poll. UMD moves up to 10th this week despite not yet having played a regular season game. Minnesota is the unanimous favorite in this week's poll with only one of these teams actually having played a regular season game thus far. Head coach Shannon Miller says this is not the poll that matters though to her or her team. It doesn't matter to me if we're ranked number one or number 15 in the public pool. It doesn't matter. There's an NCAA pool and they look at strength of schedule and we have the strongest strength of schedule almost every year, year after year. So there's, there's some weight that's given to that where the public just look at wins and losses or the media. So, I mean, it's great to be in the top 10, but the truth is it doesn't really matter. That's not the poll that matters. We've got to win, and when we win, we'll be in the top eight in the real poll. We turn our attention now back to football. Aaron Roth this season is a junior captain for the UMD Bulldogs. That's a big role for a guy who consistently makes big plays, but 
He's not a big guy. Right now we have more on the wide receiver who teammates lovingly refer to as Turtle. This UMD player profile is brought to you by Mining Minnesota. It's a name that has followed Aaron Roth, not only from YZ to Duluth, but also from eighth grade to college. From what I remember was eighth grade basketball. I was running up, uh, up the court during a practice. We were doing some conditioning, and usually I was a little bit faster than other people, but I guess I was looking pretty slow, and I was hunched over a little bit, and started calling me Turtle, and it just kind of stuck. So. The nickname now is intended more for comic relief than for accuracy, as Roth has turned into one of the best and quickest playmakers in that UMD offense. That's despite being listed, perhaps generously, at five foot 10, 180 pounds. I think I've tried to use my size as an advantage to me. Um, you know, I, I, like you said, I'm a little bit smaller than most of the guys I'm playing against. So I just have to put myself in a position where Either they're not going to see me or I'm just going to be uh, a step faster than them. Snap, now he's going to throw down the seam, and that's a catch for Aaron Roth and a touchdown. I think size is sometimes an overrated thing when you're, when you're recruiting. Uh, if you look at our receiving core as a whole, uh, we're looking for athleticism, guys that can change direction, and guys with good attitude. And Aaron coming out of the program he did at YZ High School, made a lot of plays in high school, took his team to a state championship, and uh, you know we knew the type of kid he was, and, and he certainly has grown at UMD even since Wyzetta. The early part of that growth came with veteran quarterback Chase Vogler at the controls. Now, as a junior captain, it's been Roth's turn to be the veteran and help out freshman quarterback Drew Bauer. Roth's a big playmaker out there. You try to get him the ball as much as I can. It's one of our uh, attacking points uh, in our offense. Uh, we did uh, get out on the field a lot more uh, than we did with Chase just because we had kind of more, more chemistry, a little more timing. Um, and you know, I think that, that that's kind of paying off for us right now. We're really starting to click. We're going to have more right after this, including a conversation with head UMD volleyball coach Jim Booz. It's Bulldog Country on the My Nine Sports Network. Welcome back. The UMD volleyball team last Friday fell three sets to two to six-time defending national champion Concordia St. Paul. That matchup was a one versus two meeting with the Dogs falling from the nation's top spot after that loss. The next day, though, UMD rebounded with a three sets to none sweep of Minnesota State Mankato. Kate Lang led the way with 13 kills. Julie Rainey had 18 digs in that one. That moved the Dogs to 13-1 this season, but Perhaps more significantly moved head coach Jim Booz to 311 career wins and moved him past his predecessor, Patty Rolfe, on that program's all-time wins list. And coincidentally, joining us now is that program's all-time winningest head coach, Jim Booz. Coach, thanks for joining us, and uh, congratulations. Quite an honor, I'm sure. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, an honor to have worked with as many great players and people as I have. And to get to 311, it uh, lets me know I've been around a while, but... Uh, it's pretty neat. What goes through your head uh, as you approach that mark, and, and are you happy to have it in the rearview mirror and you can kind of get back to focused on this volleyball team in this season? Yeah, I really haven't considered the mark 300 or 311 at all. Um, it just kind of happened, which is the way it should work. And most importantly, we're 13-1 and one on the year. We're moving forward and looking good, uh, tracking to where we want to be, looking ahead to November. It took you uh, about 100 matches, a little bit more than 100 matches, fewer than Patty to get to this mark uh, where you are with UMD Volleyball. That just speaks in your 12, 13 seasons here, uh, how many good players you've had come through this program. Absolutely. You know, I could rattle them off and the list would be endless. It's been great to work with so many talented kids, so many kids who have been all-conference, all-region, all-American. And then there's so many kids who maybe didn't receive those awards that have been the glue of those teams that have helped do the little things that a lot of people don't necessarily notice. So I've been very fortunate. There's no doubt about it. One of the players that's impossible not to notice, she's an award winner multiple times, is uh, Hibby native Kate Lang. She's still on pace to become your program's all-time kills leader at the end of this year. What can you say about her and, and her skills on the court? What does she present uh, to a volleyball team? Well, certainly offense is the thing that stands out first and foremost. She's probably one of the top attackers in the country at our level. Uh, she can terminate a ball in a good situation, in a bad situation, and even in a really bad situation. So she's kind of the ultimate eraser. She can change all the things that didn't go well for you and make them better. Um, but then it's all the other things that she does that makes it even more important to have her on the floor, the passing, the defense, the serving, the blocking. And she does all of those at a high level as well. We only pass with three players, and she's one of those primary passers. Teams try to pick on her. She responds to that. I think that helps get her offense rolling when she knows she's got to be focused on serve-receive because it allows the offense to just come. So 
All in all, she's just one of those special kids who can do everything really, really well. Maybe this is an unfair question because her career isn't yet over. We haven't had to time to kind of reflect on it, but the numbers suggest that she's going to be among the top one, two, three players to ever come through UMD. Is, is that where she is in your mind? Well, I can't speak on all the great players who were in UMD before I got there, but certainly of the 12 years I've been here, she's going to finish in the top two or three. Uh, Vicki Bragelman has done some pretty special things. Two-time National Player of the Year helped us get to... Uh, four regional championships and get to two final fours. So it's hard to skip over her. Difference is Vicky was a front row kid only, didn't play in the back row, didn't serve, receive any. Bulldog Country is sponsored by UMD Stores. Check us out on the UMD campus or online at umdstores.com. Welcome back to Bulldog Country. Joining us once more this half hour is head UMD football coach Kurt Weezy. Coach, we're talking about Wayne State now. Uh, you go to the, uh, on the road to Wayne State. That's a long road trip, uh, one of your longest of the year for sure. How does that affect your football team uh, getting on the bus and, and kind of piling down to Wayne State? Well, I don't think it makes a, a difference on the way down, the way home, <laughs> and uh, you know the, the late Saturday night, early Sunday morning, and our guys turning around and, and uh, coming into film and, and lift on Sunday. Sometimes that's tough, but uh, road games are road games. You know, it's uh, it's an opportunity for our guys to get out of their natural environment uh, where they live to put them in a hotel and be able to focus the night before the game. So uh, there's positives on the road as well. That bus trip home is a lot shorter, I'm sure, after a win. Uh, two years ago, last time you played Wayne State, you went down there, lost 7 uh, nothing. What do you remember about that game? What do you have to change from that game? Or does it even matter because it was two years ago now and you got two different football teams? I still remember the ride home. <laughs> you know, that was long. Uh, to lose at Wayne State uh, and have eight and a half hours home on the, on the bus was tough. Our guys still remember the guys that played in that football game to get shut out at Wayne. Uh, when we had a pretty talented offense was was a tough loss so uh, you know I think it will provide us with a little inspiration this week uh, understanding that if we don't go down there and play a good football game there's an opportunity you know that we could come out on the short end of the stick. Bulldog Country is sponsored by UMD Stores. Check us out on the UMD campus or online at umdstores.com. Welcome back to Bulldog Country. Joining us once more is UMD football defensive coordinator John Steger. Coach, uh, you got homecoming weekend this uh, this weekend up at the Mulaski Stadium. St. Cloud State's in town. Uh, what are you doing defensively to prepare for the Huskies? They're a, a very talented team offensively. Well, I can tell you I'm not sleeping much because uh, they are probably the, the most explosive offensive team in our league. They've got a you know, the club hockey, their quarterback is as, as good a player as there is in our league. They've got a veteran group of skilled receivers. Um, they, they really stress you, um, you know, and they make you defend the whole field. And uh, they've been, you know, one of the better teams in our league for a long time. So it's been a good rivalry, um, but we'll have our hands full Saturday, no doubt. You can't boil a football team down to one player, but you mentioned Phil Klopaki, the senior quarterback. Uh, he's a name I'm sure you're sick of by this point in your career, but uh, what does he do that makes it so tough on defenses? I think the thing he does the best job of is it's kind of like a, your Peyton Manning type guy where – you know, he's going to get them in a good play. If he sees us, if we tip a coverage or, or a front, you know, he's going to check the play and get them in the right play, and it's like having an offensive coordinator on the field. So we've got to do a good job disguising our stuff. Um, the other thing, too, is he, he's, uh, you know, he's similar to the guys we've had, like Chase, where Chase Vogler in the past, where he'll pull the ball down and run with it. You've got to defend him there, put a spy on him once in a while and do those kind of things. So he really stresses you, you know, and they run the football with him. He's their leading rusher, too, so... Um, you know, just a great player, and uh, you know, but our guys are excited for the challenge and looking forward to it. We opened it up on Twitter this week for questions uh, from the fans about St. Cloud State, and if any of you ever have a question for any of our UMD coaches, be sure to ask me on Twitter. I'll get you an answer during this show. Today's question, do you blitz a lot no matter the opponent, or do you wait to pick your spots against certain opponents? So a, a pretty perfect spot to ask this question. Are you going to blitz claw hockey on Saturday a lot? Well, we'll, we will be selectively aggressive, I guess is what I would say. <laughs> you know, we are a pressure team. I, there's no question, you know, when you break us down, you know, we were over 50% pressure last uh, a year ago, and, and some, some teams allow you to pressure them more than others do. You know, St. Cloud, you've got you to pick your poison here a little bit because if you come from the wrong side or they catch in something, it's going to be a big play. So, but, no, we'll be aggressive. I, you know, that, that's our style. That's who we are. Um, you know, we're not going to change for anybody, but by the same token, we're going to be smart about it and try to get in the right situations. You know, we have a veteran group on defense, and it allows us to check some stuff on the field, you know, where I don't have to always be perfect in the box making calls. Another big game for the Bulldogs. So good luck on Saturday, Coach. Thanks, Zach.
Before we close out our half hour tonight, we're going to look ahead to next week here in Bulldog Country. The men's hockey team has an exhibition game Monday before officially opening the year next weekend against Michigan Tech. Women's hockey on the road to North Dakota next weekend. Volleyball has a home match Tuesday before going on the road over the weekend. And women's soccer also away, as is football over the next weekend. So with that, we're going to say goodbye, Bulldogs fans. Remember, you can keep up with any and all UMB news on our website, nncnow.com. We'll be back same time, same place next week. Until then, I'm Zach Schneider. Thanks for watching Bulldog Country on the My 9 Sports Network.